for coming today. Hi, um, my name is Megan, I'm with the Music Can Group, and I handle the events and programming in this space if we haven't met before. Um, this is Taco About Entrepreneurship, so we're here with Amin Mahawi, and he's going to speak about what is up on the slide here. There are a lot of talk <laughs> customer, well, building customer experience into decision making, so this is an all new presentation just for you, so this is great. Um, Garita's window provided the food today, and if you didn't pick up a brochure, there are already, um, there's one punch on there, so if you frequent there or want to go back, make sure to grab one of those. Tacos left, if you're still hungry, feel free to grab. Um, I think that's it, so I will let Anna take it away. Thank, Thank you. you again for coming. Thanks, Megan. Thank you all for, for coming. <clears throat> I'll tell you a little bit about myself, just quickly. To go. That's me. That's how you can find me on Twitter. Okay, so where did I start? Um, so that was me back in 2006 when I did not have hair. And um, I started as a tech support. It was called, it's level two tech support um, mixed in with software engineering. So I graduated University of Nebraska with a computer science degree, really into uh, software development. This job was horrifying to me because here I thought I was going directly into software uh, engineering. What I found was there was also a people-facing side to this and that people-facing, customer-facing side to this was actually a majority of my time, 60 to 70 percent uh, were phone calls. 60 to 70 percent of my time was dealing with these uh, critical situations where a customer like uh, FedEx or Walgreens have their uh, server down, they're losing you know, millions of dollars, they're calling in and they get to the new guy, uh, just started a couple days ago, <laughs> to figure out both have them on the line, mitigate the situation, so be the, the people person, uh, and also the technical person that would you know, say, hang on, I'm gonna dig into the code, uh, figure out what's going on, I'll be right back with you. Just a very scary situation for, for anyone coming right out of college and being told that if you don't do something, you know, we're, we're losing a lot of money all at once. So <clears throat> that's where I started. I uh, learned a lot of things about uh, how to mitigate situations like this, these crises, and they came in different uh, critical scenarios and we wore pagers and that kind of thing. Um, but also about how you, how you build software, and I'll get to that here in a second. So that's where we started, here's where we are today. So um, the starting at IBM um, have since had the opportunity to wander about different industries. So starting in IT, I've been able to work in real estate, um, now healthcare, uh, the digital advertising space and uh, brand uh, engagement and loyalty. Um, and then who knows you know, what's, what's next. Um, but with that comes the experience that I don't get to look back on often enough, I guess, is to say, having jumped around these different industries, each one is a little bit different. The customer is a little bit different. They're not um, executives at FedEx that are losing millions of dollars. Now they are um, the, the family that's looking to lease an apartment. Um, or this is um, a uh, a father that has taken his family to Disney World, you know, what are they looking for in a loyalty program? And what does the email at the end of the year look like when I'm, when I'm explaining to, uh, to a parent how many points they, uh, they were able to accrue on their trip to Disney World, that sort of thing. So it all plays into user experience. Um, what user experience, uh, we talk about customer experience, patient experience, that's what it is, is really hearing the stories and identifying how the user or customer or patient is making decisions daily in their environment. So that's where I, that's where I come from. Um, I want you to look at this image here. Have you been to a restaurant that has one of those 45 page menus? You know, where you're really, like you, you're spending, you feel like you spent most of your time researching um, for looking for that one item that, that would fit because they have too many selections. Any show of hands as to maybe the, the last time you had that happen and how it made you feel? Any, anyone have a 
kind of a situation that, that stands out where you had that happen and it sort of maybe frustrated you or, or the opposite? Yeah. Sure, yeah, we, uh, we had a, a business meeting and we were all sitting down and trying to talk about, um, about the, the task at hand and sort through some problems and ended up all just having to gloss over the menu because the waitress kept coming back and saying, hey, you ready to eat, are you ready to eat? Sure. And uh, couldn't get our decision made. I think it was not that meeting. I think you Actually, were. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was one of those 10 pagers and, and we're trying to have a business meeting and, and also you know dig in and do the research and see which one had the guacamole and which one didn't and, and that sort of thing. So that, that plays into it. And I, I wanted to pull that into the theme of the talk because of choices and how how not only do we make choices, something as simple as putting a menu together really has to take into account where are my customers, what are they doing when they're making a decision like this. So the paradox of choice. I, I do like this quote, um, so I'll read it a lot. Learning to choose is hard. Learning to choose well is harder. And learning to choose well in a world of unlimited possibilities is harder still, perhaps too hard. So we, we come in, like you're, every walk down an aisle at High Beat, for example, you have so many choices of just the one thing. I'm just looking for you know, a sharp cheddar cheese, just give me that and I'll be on my way. <clears throat> so if I can do that, if I can help you as the business owner, if I can help you make better decisions quicker, I might be winning, I might get you to where you're going faster. Which plays into the rules of this game. Understand exactly what your user, customer, patient wants to accomplish. And rule number two, eliminate anything and everything that doesn't make them better at that number one. Right? Um, which makes sense. So it puts a lot of pressure on identifying number one. What is it your customer, user, patient is after? So to do that, you have to identify the goal state. So in this example, uh, if, if you are a restaurant owner, the goal state is to have customers in and out of their, you know, of their meal in a certain amount of time, have a great time, enjoy the ambiance, find what it is they're looking for, and really have a pleasant experience. They're going to give you the five-star rating. If you're at an ATM, very different experience. That's a quick, I want to step up to an ATM, have my card handy, enter in my information, you know, with ease, not having to do it twice or three times. And the, the end state or the goal is to get the money, right? If there's money there to be gotten. <laughs> um, and then similarly for, for Netflix or the streaming services, you want to find something to watch. You know, so oftentimes this paradox of choice plays into this. If, uh, you know, I spend a, a crazy amount of time looking, just flipping through things. It's, it's no different than flipping through channels. So have you really solved the problem where a $100 uh, DirecTV uh, subscription is flipping through channels just trying to find something in between commercials. Now you've removed the commercials, but, you, but I have even more choices of what to watch. Am I really finding them quickly? So building in um, a pathway to finding the right choice quicker. So, Every choice can be categorized, and this is simplified. Um, there is a, a book called Think Fast or Slow um, that I really like, and this is the simplification of those choices. Every choice can be ca categorized into Think Fast. What makes you get on a roller coaster? It's a horrible idea. I mean, you think about if you spent more than two minutes thinking about it, um, or maybe it's just me, if you, th if you spent too much thinking about it, it doesn't make any sense. I'm on the ground now. I'm going to get on this thing. It's going to whip at 120 miles an hour, and then I'm going to be back on the ground, hopefully. Right? <laughs> so I am playing on emotion. I have to make that a very quick decision to entice you to pay the you know, $20 to get on this ride. Or think slow. Think slow is the analytical one. So I really have to understand how you're approaching a situation like buying a car or a house or making the right decision as to where to work. Um, I have to understand and read between the lines to, to really identify, boil down what, it, what is important to you. So here's uh, Think Slow. Again, identifying all of the things your customer is thinking about when making a big decision. 
and this has come up across all of the industries I've worked in, taking that time at the beginning, we all have business ideas or project ideas that we want to kick into. Let's just, you know, I have this idea, I want to build it, I want to get it out, and then have, you know, the fun part is watching people use it. If we take the time to identify all the things that the user is actually interested in, getting out of this uh, service or product um, or solution, you have a chance of helping them make a big decision. And they're going to tell you things, a lot of things, that are contradictory. So I'll show an example of this. But if you talk to 100 different people about what they like in a, in a chair or a bench or whatever it may be, they'll tell you conflicting information um, because we're human. What your job then would be to boil it down into themes. Right, so is it something about comfort? If one says, you know, I, I like to lean back in the, you know, on a park bench and enjoy my lunch, or you know, I'm just stopping by. I like to have conversations. Like the, the theme there is, you know, either connectedness or, or liking to uh, spend quality time outdoors, that sort of thing. So you're reading between the lines. Here's an example from from my <clears throat> work recently: rental applications or a leasing application for a, for an apartment. The end goal, obviously, is to get the key, right? I, I want to pay you money. I like what I see. I want to pay you money. I want to get the key to the apartment and make it easy for me. Unfortunately, the leasing application itself is 10 pages long, oftentimes. So in the situation we were working in, or the example I'm giving here, people would, and on the paper and online version, would get through page one. They've looked at 20 different places. They can't, there's 10 different applications for the, for the uh, 10 different apartments they're interested in. Having a hard time making the decision, first off, is sort of the empathetic to their needs, and then having a long application process where they have to enter in their uh, driver's license number 10 times um, is difficult for them. So you have a lot of applications, and we can see this with the online version because you can track how long they've been on the forum and what they've filled in. Page one, at the end of uh, 10 entries, a lot of them never come back to finish the application. And they're going for the easier solution or a place that would just you know, take their check and money and let's finish this at another time. So what do you do about that? Uh, here's, the, here's the tough part, is you have to draw it out. So the, this is where you spend your time. You bring in uh, five to 10 to 20 recent uh, lease or I guess renters um, who have gone through the process and you ask them exactly what it is, what situation they were in when they came in. They just got to Rochester. They just moved to Rochester. Um, they start uh, classes in July. They need a place by then. Um, that's it. Like they, and they have a family. They're, you know, the, a wife or a, a spouse is coming along. What, how do I find the right place? So you track that and you write it out. Uh, and it's nice if you have whiteboard walls, because then it's not on paper. Um, but you, you then take those notes and you boil it down. So as we just mentioned, these are things like um, wanting a quick process, being able to save my progress if it's an online leasing application. So I don't have time for the two hour, you know, get out your, um, passport or driver's license, enter in this information. I don't have my W-2 right now. Some applications then, at this time, if I exit out of that browser window or I accidentally shut the laptop down, I'm gonna have to restart the process. So being able to track my progress was, was important to them. And then you, you just do, and I had trouble with this, so you just build what you're, what you're hearing. So I've heard about um, save my progress, make it easy, break down the questions into sections that make sense. Um, I'm not comfortable handing out my social security because we, we have to ask for a social security number and your driver's license number to run a standard uh, credit and background check. The initial forms had that uh, page one, you know, where as you got to the form, fill that in first. That creeped people out. How do I know that I can trust you especially as an online uh, vendor, how do I know that I can trust you with this sensitive information? 
so you pull that in. So it's not only about the decision, but now how do I architect to move the information around, these inputs around, to really please the user so I can gain their trust. So it's not until, you know, I'm gonna save your progress, it's not until slide six or uh, until the sixth step of the process that I'm gonna say, we have this information, you can use it for not only this property, but 200 others in town. So I'm gonna save your information and use it that way. But now it's critical that I have your social security number so that I can run your background check. Are you okay with doing that? And it's a question. I'm not saying you, you have to, it's not a required field, enter it or else. Like, are you comfortable with it or not? If they aren't, there's a way around it. We just, we're just reducing the, the burden on them you know, to the point where they can come into the office and then write it in if that's, if that's what they're comfortable with. So you build the experience and then you iterate. So whether it's a product, service, software, you are able to come out to, come out with, with something. And then it's only then that you'll really see it in, in the wild and be able to, to test it out the way you'd like to outside of a user interview. Let's switch to Think Fast because this is more fun. Think Fast, like the roller coaster example, you really want to evoke an emotion and quickly and tell a story in as few words as possible. It's even better if it's just a picture. Right? So here's an example. The Taco Bell drives here and it's, you know, Garita's one is a million times better, but I do like Taco Bell sometimes. Taco Bell, you just drive up, there's pictures, like you don't need to know what's in it because there are essentially six ingredients, you know, sw switch swapped, you know, a million different ways. So just show me a picture of what combination of green, yellow, you know, brown it is, um, and how many I get, and if it comes in a box, and if I get more, you know, more boxes, what do I get? Um, and then just take my money. Like I, I know why I'm here, good decision or bad, I know how much I want to spend and the price is right and I know what it looks like, I, I think, and I just want to go through the window and pay for it. So that's like, I just, there's no story, it's not one of those think slow moments because it, again, if you think about it too long, you'll likely go somewhere else. Like you found yourself here and I just want to make a decision and go before I regret it. So that's how Think Fast works. Um, and that plays into, again, the menu or the, the ordering board because you have to design it in a way they would not get your sale, I don't think or believe, um, if instead of a picture, you know, they were to show you how they made it, right? Well, we took it from the box and we stuck it in the microwave and here it is. They would not get your business. But if I show you a nice picture, you might. A more recent example or a better example to me is seeing how big Instagram has gotten, for example, in the sale of fashion and lifestyle, and those are pictures. No one reads the hashtags. You might click in to see other content similar to it, but these are instant, you know, you're flowing through, you know, I watch my wife do this, you know, flipping through um, Instagram, looking at ideas for what to wear, or what goes well together, or how to um, decorate a, a basement or a living room, right? Because they're telling a story through that picture, and it's people you might know. So it, it, a lot of times these um, the Instagram stories um, she'll watch or I'll watch are people that you know or you think, you, you think you'd like to know um, and what it is they're doing with their time, how it is they're spending their money or what colors, you know, like, oh, he's wearing a blue shirt with gray shorts, like that, that's cool. I'd like to do that, where did you find that? And you know, you might have it tagged if you're, you know, if, if you work for Target or, or wherever the, the, the retailer may be, like I'd like to, to look for that item. This works extremely well, and no one thought it thought it would. It was planned that way, but it really plays to the think fast. Because now I'm hearing a story, or it's somebody with you know a 30-part Instagram you know story that's telling you why it is they picked this and how it matches with this and, and this whole. Um, and I'm I'm new to this. I don't understand it. But there's people that try you know try out clothes for you in a sense, like they're trying on clothes and they're like, well, this is tight right here and you should watch out for this because the belt is whatever. It's weird, <laughs> but people do it. So, you know, do you like fun stuff? Do you enjoy looking good? Um, I'm busy and bored at the same time, which seems to be the case with, you know, being on your phone. Like you're, you're too busy to be at your desktop, uh, but you're also bored. 
Um, and then you enjoy a good story. So if somebody tells you about why a trip to, their recent trip to Cancun was so bad and why they chose one resort over another, you're gonna listen, you're gonna watch because that's, again, we're human, we like stories. And then tell me what to buy. So they're simplifying the decision process. It isn't me looking through everything at, um, at Macy's. It's like, it looks good on so-and-so, maybe I should try it out, becomes the decision. So that's a, the different, that, that would be the complex, it, it's simple, I, I simply watered it down to say there is the think fast for emotional, you know, like grab attention, get emotional um, acceptance, and then there's the think slow where it's something like a leasing application or a big life transition um, or change where you really need to dig in and do the user research. Um, there are steps and ways to do it um, that get you better results than others, than just asking somebody um, you know, how they leased their last apartment, that get you uh, great results. And then being able to boil it down in a, in a way that makes sense. Um, I can't speak to the process enough, I'm really passionate about identifying, everything has a menu to it. So just like you would get to a restaurant, whether you're looking at uh, pictures or a higher end restaurant where you, you know, they tell you, you know, the specific lake the fish came from and, and how it grew up and where it went to school. <laughs> like they, all of those, like there's a place for, for each and it, and it plays into how you're going to design your menu, or your service or your patient experience, um, all of that sort of thing in a way that makes sense. So, um, any questions? So when you start your creative thinking process, how do you, Organize the process so that people in the group are not going too quick to solution. Because you want to keep things moving without landing on something too quickly, and then everybody gets into the design phase as opposed to the exploration consideration phase. That's a very good question. So that's that's one of the hardest parts. Because to make the right decision, you need all the right people in the room. And to have all the right people in the room means it's gonna be very diverse. You're gonna have the business owner you know, down to the, the technical person. If it's software, you're gonna have the software engineer and the, the business unit head, um, and then up to, let's say, the VP of technology in the room. They all want different things. VP of sales, for example, wants the revenue, like how much money is this gonna make? Whereas the, the guy coding the thing is gonna say, this is, like, I just want to know what to build and, and how. So oftentimes you get to solutioning very quickly. When can we have it out? Um, what technology is it, is it going to, uh, is it going to be built on? Um, and uh, how quickly can, can it be done? What you have to do is slow it down to address the question, why, what are we building and who are we building it for? And what problem does it solve? Is a, is a good question with you know the, the blanks open so you can fill them in. And if you use um, uh, sticky notes, because 3M is up there, um, mm -hmm. if you use sticky notes up on a board, you can help manage, because sticky notes are all the same size, it doesn't matter who wrote them, which is kind of fun too, is you know, VP and the, and the technical guy both have the same size sticky note. One is saying, um, here's the problem I think we're solving, um, here's why, here's what problem it solves. And then you, again, you boil it down to say, there's an outlier here, this one doesn't really fit, tell us more, like who wrote this sticky? Um, and uh, to be able to, to gauge any differences, because we want to be on the same page, on the problem, not the solution. Yet. And then you go on, so you're really pulling them through the journey, so you don't allow them to get to solution. So next we're going to talk about what are the risks, right? What are the, the goals and risks of completion of this thing? And it gets them thinking a different way. We're not even talking about building it. Like, what are the risks of getting this done in six months? Or uh, what is the goal of building this thing? And then again, you boil it down and you have sticky notes. So at the end, you have your top four reasons to build the thing, the product, the service. You have the top four goals, the top four risks. Um, here is the, um, the diagram of who's doing what. So you have to address, you know, when this code gets delivered, you know, that the manager is going to review it, then it goes to testing, and then the sales and marketing person has something to go off of to build it. It, it adds so many steps that solution, if you jump to solutioning, yeah, it's easy, you know, just build it and, and we'll get it out the door. It never happens that way. So you get a clearer picture of how to scope a project um, if you run through defining the problem, 
the goals and the risks. And then and only then can you start saying, now let's get into the fun design phase and, and address how we can But um, I heard you also reference entrepreneurism as a project. So I love that idea that you, you know, within a large organization, even if you're not going to go out and start a business, that you're starting a project, starting an idea. So that's I. That's that. the piece. I agree with that, and I and I have had trouble with it at different organizations for different reasons because it's not treated as an idea. It's just all part of the the collective. You know, like you build it because it's part of this bigger unit of work. You really should be addressed as a smaller unit because you have different stakeholders, and that one that one idea will require different resources that you may or may not have. So then you can jump out and say, "I need this many designers, this many cooks in the kitchen, etc." To get it done. So I, I do like kind of uh, encapsulating to a team. Any others?